Hello friends and welcome back to another interesting session by Wikipedia World. Continuing our discussion on concepts, let's see what is accrual concept. Now this particular concept applies to both revenue and expenses. Now what is revenue? Revenue is the gross income figure of an organization for a particular period. That is whatever a business person earns by selling the goods or services he produces is his revenue or income or sale proceeds. And what about expenses? The amount an organization spends to earn revenue for that particular period is expenses. So for a particular period the amount is spent in order to earn the revenue under various heads is expense. To understand the accrual concept let's get back to my coffee shop. One day again my friend Dali pays a visit to my coffee shop. We had a lot of chit chat and he had coffee at my shop and the date that day was 5th of October. Instead of paying that day Dali promised me to pay later. Now I knew that he is a miser and getting the payment released from him would be a big task but still I tried a lot I gave him reminder calls I kept on bugging him and finally I was able to receive the payment on 20th of December So what do you think when should I record this transaction on 20th of December when I received the cash for the services I provided to him or on 5th of October when I actually provided the services to him. The transaction as per this concept will be recorded on 5th of October. That is when I actually provided the services to him. So under accrual concept, revenues are recorded when they are earned or realized irrespective of the fact that whether the cash for it is received or not. So the owner of the goods or services will be recording the revenue as and when he provides the goods and services to his customer irrespective of the fact that whether he has received the cash for it or not on the date of providing goods or services. Similarly, if there would have been some advance payment by a customer to me to provide some services later on, I will be recording the transaction when I have actually provided the services and not on the date when I have received the advance payment for it. Suppose the rent of my coffee shop is due to be paid on 31st of May but I actually make the payment one month later that is on 30th of June. So when should I record this transaction? On 31st May when the rent was due to be paid or on 30th of June when I actually made the payment? I will record this transaction on 31st of May when the rent was actually due to be paid. Now simple logic behind it because in that particular month because of my shop I was able to earn some revenue. So whatever expenses are due in order to earn that revenue of that particular month will be recorded in that particular month only and not later on when I actually make the payment. And similarly if suppose I make some payments advance but they are not due that particular time so the recording of such advance payments will be made when they are actually due for payment. So in case of expenses accrual concept assumes that expenses are recorded when they are incurred and actual payment of cash is not relevant. Thus accrual concept assumes that revenues are recognized when earned and expenses are recognized when assets are consumed. Now this accrual concept is often described as matching concept. So let's see what is matching concept. Now according to matching concept all costs which are applicable to revenue of the period should be charged against the revenue. Following this concept is very important in determination of net profit. So in order to understand this concept let's get back to my coffee shop. Now here I will be listing down some income and expenses of my coffee shop in a particular year and they are as follows. Cost of material for 5000 cups of coffee is equals to rupees 5 lakh. Rent rupees 60,000 per annum. I did a sale of 4000 cups of coffee for rupees 5 lakh. Furniture costed me rupees 1 lakh 50,000 and the estimated life is 15 years. That is for the next 15 years these furniture will provide me benefits to earn revenue. 
I also insured my stock for the next three years, including this particular year, and the premium costed me rupees fifteen hundred. Now, one of my customer, Mr. Y, he wanted to arrange birthday party of his daughter in the next year, and for the same, he paid me advance of rupees ten thousand in the current year. Now, from this data, I have to calculate net profit, and I am overconfident. Calculating net profit is very easy. It's nothing but just the difference between income and expenses. If my income is more than expenses, then it's profits for me, and if expenses is more than my income, it is a loss. So I proceed ahead to calculate profit of my business for this particular period. First, I list down my income. Let's see what are the heads of income here. Cost of material for five thousand cup of coffee that is rupees five lakh. No, this cannot be my income. This is the expense which I made to acquire the material for making coffee. Rent rupees sixty thousand. This is also an expense. Now sold four thousand cups of coffee for rupees five lakh. So this shows revenue. So I'll note it down under income. That is sales rupees five lakh. Now furniture rupees one lakh fifty thousand. No, this is also not an income. I have paid for the furniture. Now insurance premium of stock for three years. This is also an expense. I paid for it. Next is advance received from Mr. Y. Now this is also a source of income. So I will note this also down under income. So my income sums up to rupees five lakh ten thousand. Now I will proceed ahead to list down all the expenses. So cost of material for five thousand cup of coffee that is rupees five lakh, an expense because I paid for it. So I list down purchases rupees five lakh. Now rent, yes I paid for this also. So rupees sixty thousand will be listed down under expenses. Now furniture, I paid for this also. So furniture rupees one lakh fifty thousand. This is also listed under expenses. Now insurance premium of stock for three years, I paid for it this year itself. So I list this also down. So rupees fifteen hundred under expenses. So my expenses sums up to shit man. It is rupees seven lakh eleven thousand five hundred. Oh my god. I can very well see just by looking at my income and expenses that my expenses exceeds my income. Now let's see how much is the amount of loss I am making. I know that profit is equals to income minus expenses, but this time my expenses are more than income, so obviously I am making losses. And uh, what is the amount of my loss? It comes to rupees two lakh one thousand five hundred. Oh my God! This is the amount of losses I am making. I'm surely doomed. What should I do now? Should I shut down this business? But this is my dream. I have invested a lot of money on it. So what should I do now? I think I should take an expert advice. So I go to one of my dear friend who is an accountant and I present this data to him and request him to see what can be done so that I can minimize my losses. So he goes through this data and he again starts calculating the profit or loss for this year. He first lists down all the income. He lists down sales of four thousand cups of coffee, which is rupees five lakh, and he also lets me know that I am charging rupees one twenty five per cup of coffee because four thousand into one twenty five comes to rupees five lakh. Then he straight away calculates the total income, which is equals to five lakh. I ask him that why didn't you consider advance payment which I received from Mr. Y that is rupees ten thousand. I said that I came to you to get my losses minimized and you are actually mounting more on the losses by not considering this amount. So he starts laughing and he explains me that this rupees ten thousand I have received for the services which I need to provide in the future. So why should I account for it in the current period? So I said okay. And then I start panicking more because now I know that my losses are going to be more as compared to what I have calculated. So now he starts to list down all the expenses. So first expense he shows under purchases that is rupees five lakh. Now he also reduces the closing stock of rupees one lakh. I didn't get this. I asked him why are you doing so. So he explains me. See, in the current year, you sold only four thousand cups of coffee. 
whereas you purchase material for 5000 cups of coffee so you need to show only those expenses which you made in order to earn your current income why are you even showing those expenses through which you have not earned any revenue so the material which is left that is you just sold 4000 cups of coffee so the material for 1000 cups of coffee is still left which you can actually utilize in the next year so we need to deduct the cost of that material from the purchases you have made and he calculates that amount to be rupees 1 lakh so 5000 cups of coffee costed me rupees 5 lakh that means per cup of coffee costs me rupees 100 and 1000 cup of coffee I didn't sell so 100 into 1000 equals to rupees 1 lakh so he deducts this amount of closing stock from purchases and the amount which is relevant to the revenues which I have earned that is rupees 5 lakh is rupees 4 lakh next he lists down rent which will be the same that is rupees 60,000 because this was for current period next he lists down furniture and he makes it as depreciation on furniture rupees 10,000 I was blown away with happiness how is it just 10,000 you're recording then he explained me that rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand which you invested on furniture you are going to avail the benefit of the same for next 15 years so this cost has to be divided equally for 15 years so every year only that part of furniture will be charged as expenses for which you have received the benefits so if we divide 1 lakh 50 thousand by 15 years it comes to rupees 10 thousand I was so happy to know this that my expenses are going down and that too based on some valid assumptions now next he moves forward to record the insurance premium so insurance premium was rupees 1500 he says that because you have paid for three years and in this amount two years is your advance payment so we need to deduct the amount of advance payment so out of this insurance premium of rupees 1500 he deducts prepaid premium for next two years that comes to rupees 1000 and how does he calculates it by dividing the total amount of premium by 3 because it has been paid for 3 years and multiplying the answer that is 500 with 2 which comes to rupees 1000 so the final amount of premium comes to rupees 500 so following the matching concept he listed down all the expenses and the final expenses comes up to rupees 4,70,500 so next he moves forward to calculate the profit for the year which is equals to income minus expenses my income for this particular period was rupees 5 lakh and my expenses was rupees 4,70,500 so ultimately I have earned profits of rupees 29,500 for this particular year and I was giggling all the way with happiness and I decided that from next year I am going to appoint an accountant to calculate the net results of the transactions I made during the year and now even you would have been able to figure out that how important it is to follow accounting concepts and you know that how important is matching concept when it comes to calculating the net profits of the business so four things you need to keep in mind when you go for the matching concept first thing that if an item of revenue is included in profit and loss account all expenses incurred to earn that revenue should be shown in profit and loss account whether they have been paid or not so for a particular period what all expenses I have incurred to earn a particular revenue I have to account for all the expenses in the profit and loss account next point is if some expenses are paid partly for the next year also then in profit and loss account only expenses related to current year will be shown so remember in the example above I have shown the insurance premium for next three years because I paid it in the current year but no I should not do this whatever advance payment I have made because the benefit of that payment will be earned in the future so I have to record for them in the future in PL account and not in the current year next point is cost of the goods remaining unsold at the end of the year together with the expenses incurred on it must be carried forward to the next year so that is what my friend did in my case 
that is he carried forward the cost of the goods which remained unsold that is the cost of 1000 cups of material for preparing coffee to the next year and he deducted this particular amount from the purchases I made that particular year because these goods can be sold in the next year. Next point income receivable must be added in revenue and advance income received must be deducted from revenues. So suppose I have rendered the services in this particular month but I have to receive the payment in the next month so I will be recording the transaction in this month only because in this month itself I have rendered the services and similarly if I receive some advance payment for the services to be provided later on I will record that income only when I have provided the services. So now you know that why matching concept is very important for correct determination of profits. So in this session we have studied about accrual concept and what is accrual concept? It says that a businessman should record revenue or expenses when they have earned it or when they have incurred it irrespective of the fact when they have received or paid the cash for it. Matching concept is almost similar to accrual concept and it says that all the expenses related to revenue earned in a particular period should be accounted for in that particular period irrespective of the fact whether you have paid the cash for it or not. So let's get on to a quick exercise to test whether you have understood the basics or not. So your question for this session is accrual concept is based on option A business entity concept, option B going concern concept, option C matching concept and option D none of the above. These two concepts have been taught in the last session so you can go back and revise it. So I will be waiting for your answers in the comment section below. So stay tuned with me for leftover concepts and I will see you in the next session. Thank you.